Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> so for this video, as you can tell by everything, we're gonna be transforming into an 18th century princess. <laughs> This is inspired by all of these 18th century paintings of royals of the time, which you may or may not recognize. This was overall a very popular look to wear. It had a lot of significance and meaning, and we're gonna go through all of that in this video. So, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need is white foundation. So white foundation in the 18th century meant that Meant a few things actually. It meant that you were innocent, pure. Um, it mostly meant that you could afford not to work. So you would get tan from working outside, so that, which means you don't have a lot of money. So being pure white meant that you can afford to stay inside and never work. So I'm going to be applying um, the Celebrate HD Pro Mayron HD Cream Foundation in the color Light One. This is a really good uh, mimic to the lead paint that they use. They used um, a very toxic, poisonous lead paint because it gave you that pure white complexion. A lot of them would get blisters from, like, okay, if you guys remember watching that um, episode in the show The Misadventures of Flapjack, do you remember that lady would be like, more powder, Charles, more powder. Um, one, a lot of times they would apply more and more layers and layers day after day of, you know, the white lead and the powder for two reasons. One, because they didn't really bathe that often, so they would just layer themselves in that little powder and be like, oh, I'm clean again. Also, they would actually need the makeup over time because the lead would cause blisters and rashes and really, it would make your face really ugly. So you would need more foundation or the lead makeup, the paint, to cover up the fact that the lead is giving you that side effect. So it was a very toxic relationship. So now that you look like the live action version of Casper, the next thing you want to apply is white powder, the whitest of the whitest powder, to continue enhancing your pale white complexion. So let's put this on. And they would put so much on that it's ridiculous. Like didn't even care if they looked crusty. They looked white is all that matters. So the next thing we need is blusher, and I got this super vintage looking blush from Besame Cosmetics. I love it. And it is pretty accurate to what they would apply to their cheeks. So we're going to be applying this on our cheeks and heavily. They love to look like they were breaking out. Um, so we're going to put this heavily on the cheeks right there and onto the lip. They would also put it on their nose sometimes, just a little bit. I saw a few portraits with a little bit of a blushy nose. So, I'm gonna put a little bit, just a little bit, not too much. Next, we're gonna apply that on the lips. Kim Kardashian has nothing on my makeup routine. Okay. Next, we're gonna be taking a coal eyeliner. Um, I'm just gonna be using this to draw in the eyebrows. I'm just going to draw it in, just in a little line. And you would drag it out pretty far like that. So you would draw it in an arch and you would draw it very thin because that would make you look more delicate. So next we're gonna be applying beauty marks on our face. So basically in the 18th century beauty marks were a way to cover up skin blisters, um, pimples, pretty much any imperfection. Stick a beauty mark on it. Um, but it was also a way to communicate with each other when you're at a party and stuff without actually having to say anything. So let me walk you through what the placements of the beauty mark pretty much represented. So right here on your forehead, it meant that you were majestic. On the eye, it meant that you were passionate. On the cheek, it meant that you were the amatory, aka induced to sexual activities quite easily. Um, on the lip right here, it meant that you were the kisser. On like right under the nose, it meant that you were whimsical. And on the nose bridge, it meant that you were the facing. So because of that, I think I'm gonna go for the whimsical here. I think I'm also gonna put one, cause you can pick more than one to kind of help describe who you were. I think I'm gonna put passionate. I am passionate. What else? Majestic, I'm gonna do majestic. 
So I am whimsical, passionate, and majestic. Boys, come get me now. I am all the most wonderful things a girl could be. Just look at my beauty marks. <laughs> so lastly, we're gonna be applying mascara, and not too much, but just enough to kind of enhance the eyes. So I'm gonna be taking the Cake Mascara by Besame. It's very vintage looking, it's got this really cool brush. Um, they would often use coal or oil paint, but I'm not doing either of those. I'm gonna be using Safe Mascara. <laughs> But it's in a vintage style, so it kind of like works for the era, sort of, kind of. Now obviously you can't really tell all that much, but you know who could tell? Your lover when he's this close to you and you're looking up at the chandelier all romantically and he goes, Wow, but what those lashes do, girl? That's all that matters, so here they are. Here's the face. Let's move on to hair. So in the 18th century, you would often do the famous Marie Antoinette hairdo that would go up into an egg shape. You would put feathers and flowers and bird stuff and, and you would put white powder all over it so you look like you're 80 years old because that was the style. But I feel like 18th century Jessica would not do that hairstyle because, you know, me, I don't like to follow trends that much. I just... I can't imagine 18th century Jessica doing it. So what I would do is copy the look of the Duchess Francois Maria Bourbon, and she would rock her own hair with these two little curls. So this is what she looked like, and I think that's what I would do in the 18th century. So let's copy that hairstyle. She had her hair kind of up down the center, like this. Kind of poofy poof, like that. She also had this brought up back. Oh, I already see it. That's cute. Okay. So you're just going to bobby pin that back. If you want to copy this hairstyle, follow me. You're going to pin it. Make sure you leave a little piece for curls. And we're going to keep pinning until you don't see it. Okay. So next she put a tiara right here. And I found one that's kind of like in the same shape that she has. And then we're going to continue to pin until it looks almost like a ponytail. And then we're gonna curl these little bits. So this is actually really easy. I'm pretty sure they took a lot more time doing this and making sure that every single strand, like every single strand had to be perfect because if it didn't, that meant that you didn't have good morals, so I think they would take longer just to make it smooth. So I got these earrings because I feel like, yeah, yes, yes, this, I need one more, but <laughs> I feel like the earrings balance, balance out the whole look, so let me get the earrings on and then I'm going to curl the hair. I'm going to take little pieces by little pieces and I'm cheating because I'm using <laughs> an iron from this era, but... They did use some kind of iron because they would take a, like an iron bar, heat it up, and then wrap their hair around it. So technically, this is allowed, so <laughs> we're gonna just add tight curls. These little curls down here, she has one portrait where she has it kind of straight and then it gets curly at the end, so that's what I did. And now I'm gonna curl little bangs here into little curves, so let's do that, yep. Yeah. Perfect. And my TR keeps falling. Okay. So what do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Would you do this? Would you like to live in this time period? What kind of person do you think you would be in this time period? Comment that all down below. I personally don't hate it. I don't like it. I don't mind it. I think it's wearable. I think I would be mad about looking like this in that time period. Um, I think it looks okay. It looks okay. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up before you go. Um, if you guys want more vintage and princess content like this, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so I can see you in my next video.